So for example, it's gonna be on schedule one, and then we're gonna say page number two, and we've got the good old IRA, the trusty IRA. Now the great thing about an IRA is that you could you can actually wait until you, you complete your taxes, and then before you file, as long as it's before the original due date, you can try to say, how much could I maximize my IRA for? So software will usually allow you, this is the last kind of tax plan and you can do oftentimes, I'm gonna say I'm gonna maximize my amount that I can put into an IRA by putting a one there, and that's 6,000 in this case, which is great, but it's still pretty low. If I don't have a lot of cash flow, that might be all, all I can put into an IRA, and, I, and that's fine, then, I'm, then that's great, because I, I couldn't utilize any more that if I had more capacity to put more money in. I don't get the matching and everything, but I get I get to put money in in a similar fashion up to up to six thousand. The problem is six thousand is a low limit compared to how much you could put into a four hundred one k or often a SEP and stuff. So that's where it comes in. So that lower that is going to be involved here. So now your AGI has been adjusted. So that's great. But if the cash flow gets to the point where you're like, I could put I could I could have put way more into my four hundred one k plan. So I should be able to put more in to my IRA than six thousand because I'm starting to I'm starting to rock and roll over here. I'm getting I'm earning like good money, and I need to put it somewhere, and I want to get some tax break on it. So what can I do to to get higher than the IRA? Well, well I could maybe say well I'll do my own 401k plan, but that's quite burdensome to do uh, because the administration work is difficult. So is there an easier kind of plan for small people? Uh, like me so I can put more money into my plan and give a benefit to my uh, employees for putting money into the plan. Now, if you have employees that you're putting money in, they're the money that they, that that is related to the employees, generally you would think would be a deductible item here on the Schedule C. But the amount of money that we're putting in to a SEP or simple that's related to us. And if we're possibly a sole proprietor with no employees, then that might be all we have, right? Uh, then it would, that part generally isn't here on the Schedule C. That's gonna be over here on, once again, the Schedule 1, page number two. So instead of the IRA, we're looking SEP or SIMPLE. These, as the names indicate here, at least the SIMPLE, are a lot easier to set up than a, a a 401k plan or something like that. They're not quite as easy as an IRA, just your individual IRA, but they're still pretty, pretty easy to set up. So the goal then would be, which two of these is the best for me? Now, these are often gonna be limited. I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail on them here, but you wanna basically compare and contrast between your, your options to set up a plan to maximize your benefits and your current and planned future employee. Uh, benefits would be the general idea and one of the things that is nice is to look for a plan that you could possibly once again uh, look into after after the tax year is over because oftentimes I don't know how much money I can put in to my SEP or simple until I do my tax return and know how much money I have and then that's going to set the limits or help me to set the limits so I can try to maximize the money I put into my retirement so that's one that's a great advantage uh that you want to you know consider when you're in a business when you're doing a small business oftentimes so if i jump to these items and let's just check these out like if i go to my if i go to my self-employment sep and let's say i maximize the sep then i'm going to go back on over and so that's currently at the 18587 now that's going to be contingent to some degree on my income level Meaning if my income was higher, let's put this, let's add like another hundred thousand here and go back on over. Now we're at 34,642. So you see what I mean? It's contingent on your income. So you kind of have to do the taxes to see how much you can maximize in. Although you can possibly get a pretty good estimate. And a lot of people will of course be limited by cash flow. A lot of people aren't going to have $37,000 to put into the to put into the set but if you're doing quite if your business is going well you may well have the money to put in and and so it's nice to be able to do that calculation so you can try to maximize the amount that you could put in there so then this is going to add up once again 
to the 49 434 pull into the form 1040 right and you'd have a similar process for a a simple so I, if i jump over here and i do the simple and i try to maximize the simple instead of the sep boom you can use the software to kind of kind of play around with it so you can see a substantial difference right so you want to be comparing and contrasting the pros and cons and those pros and cons will differ a lot uh, if you have employees because you want and so what are your objectives are your objectives mainly to, to maximize how much you could put into the the retirement plan to get a benefit similar to what you could have had like in a 401k plan or something like that going exceeding the six thousand dollar limit or cap in an ira or is your goal more towards you have a lot of employees that you're trying to maximize your payroll to them which is of course also a benefit to you as well because the more that you can you can pay them the more that you can pay them and have that money go further the more benefit you're able you're able to give them so if you can give them a tax break that's also saving you money it's saving you as a as a whole the team more more money so so it so it depends on where your circumstances are, are in terms of how many employees you have uh how well you're able to kind of estimate what your income will be what your cash flow is uh to see if you can maximize out the total dollar limits and what you're projecting to happen in the future with regards to those those terms as well so so once again that the general idea would be oftentimes what happens is people go from a w-2 employee they start a schedule c and then they realize they don't have a 401k plan here they want to put money away you can put money into an ira which is similar to a 401k but there's a low threshold limit to put the money in and then you go into these options about okay maybe we should set up some kind of retirement plan so i can put more money into it and then then you want to dive into more research and just think what's the best option for my particular situation and always when you do research on these more complex types of things you probably want to talk to someone who is not being paid directly for setting the thing up because oftentimes lawyers and accountants and whatnot like to set up complicated things just for the sake of complication because they get paid for complicated things right so you so if it's complicated doesn't mean it's necessarily good uh you, you know so you want to kind of figure out which is so you might want to pay someone in other words just for advice comparing and contrasting and then then look to pay someone to set it up manage it and and so on but it's usually a pretty easy process if you choose one of those like a simple or step type of system but just make sure you know how the how the employees work and fit within it and your requirements to facilitate it.